Okay, so we have a student model in here. Uh, this is an assembly with two parts in it. We have a rod part and a ring part. The ring part's got a hole in it, and the, the student's di desire is at about this location, I'm assuming, that he wants to be able to put that ring uh, around that rod and be able to have uh, the ring spin around that rod through that hole tangentially. So he has a good start here. He's got a parallel relationship over here uh, with the assembly and then a tangent relationship in here too but it's not providing motion and um, probably kind of frustrating. So let me show you how to do this. What we like to do is we want to go ahead and put in a feature down here, very similar to this feature up here, this ring, the circle, the circular feature, and we want to establish a relationship down here with the ring. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a split line. We're going to put a plane down here and then we're going to do a projected uh, split line on that with that plane and this uh, truncated uh, a cone in here and we're going to uh, have that circular feature right down here at about the same area that we see right here so let's go ahead and measure this let's go ahead and measure from the surface up here down here to about where that ring is and we are looking for probably that normal distance in here well, let's see you know along the x probably would be good along the y so if we can find my along the y but there's a minimum distance of 5.13 why don't we go ahead and use that and there's along the Y, 5.13, so we'll use 5.125, 5 and an eighth inches. So let's go ahead and open up this part. Let's go ahead and uh, take our alignment ring. Now let's go ahead and readjust that, uh, but let's actually just go ahead and delete that for now. We're going to start a new one. So we're going to go to the top plane. We're going to drag that down. Remember it's 5 and an eighth inches, so 5.125. And then we're going to go to the green check mark, and then we're going to take this plane and we're going to uh, do the split line in here. So we're going to take this plane projected and uh, do a split line in this so we can get a circular feature kind of like what we have up here that we could actually use for mating. So let's go up to the search bar up here and go to search where you want to do split line. We're going to do intersection and we're going to go ahead and uh, choose this section uh, selection here. And then over here we're going to go ahead and choose that truncated cone. We can see the yellow preview of what we're going to get, which is going to be that circular split in there. And now we're going to use that. So let's go back to our uh, assembly and see if we can get this to move around a little bit. Let's take these two uh, relationships in here, these two mates in here. Let's go ahead and suppress those for now and kind of put that back to where it was before. So now we have that split in there and we could probably use that. So we have a plane that's associated with that, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that plane and that rod. So that's our plane number four. We take plane number four, and we're going to take this circle in here, and we're going to make that uh, in, the, in the assembly. We're going to mate those together, so now that uh, the ring's not going to flop around on us. And it's still, yeah, it's kind of, it's still kind of moving around. It looks like it has kind of a relationship with that rod, but I don't really think it does. But we're going to establish a relationship in here by taking this circular feature in here and that uh, circular surface on the inside of that cylinder, that cylindrical surface, and we're going to go back up to mate. We could do uh, concentric in here if we want to do that, but tangent is what we really want. So we're going to go to green check mark and we're going to rotate that around so it kind of spins around a little bit. It's tangent to it too. And it stays tangent, but it seems like when we add this one mate in here, this coincident mate in here, at the same plane that we uh, put in that uh, tangent relationship between uh, you know, that circular feature that we have there, the circular split, and that cylindrical surface, that seems to tie that together really well. To do that without that could be kind of tricky. I think it's going to flop around on you and there's always a chance that that tangency is going to pop to the outside. We're going to have the rod to the outside of that hole. Still tangent, but tangencies have a tendency whether it's a sketch relation or a mate, have a tendency to flip on you. And I think uh, SolidWorks is going to solve that in a future edition, perhaps. But that's what we have that seems to work out. And as a recap, to provide a tangent mate between a conical surface and a cylindrical surface in an assembly, and to keep it from flipping, it's helpful to provide a coincident mate between a plane that is perpendicular to the axis of the selections for the tangent mate, and then another mate between the circular section or feature of the conical surface and the cylindrical section of the other part.